Greetings. I'm so glad to see you guys. I'm so glad to um, to have you here worshiping with us today. We're going to start out of Acts today. And we're going to start in Acts chapter 4, just reading. Just reading. You know, so there's nothing wrong with just reading a small passage. And today we are just reading Acts chapter 4, verse 31. When they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. What a great response to prayer. I mean, can you imagine um, that having prayed, the whole place was shaken and Everyone was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke God's word with boldness. That's how powerful prayer can be. And so following that scripture passage from um, Acts and the power that that prayer holds for us as God's people, let's take a look at Matthew. We are in... um, We're in Matthew chapter 6, and we're starting with verse 7. Now, I'm not reading what comes before. You know the passage before. It's it's don't pray like these guys, right? Don't don't do like those hypocrites. But we're going to start with verse 7. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases like the Gentiles do. For they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. For your father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way. Our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, I want us to to remember and revitalize something that we can so easily forget today, and that is the power of prayer. So often, we we dismiss prayer way too easily. And, you know, if you go online, for example, to Facebook, or if you're, you're talking with a group of friends, so oftentimes we, we diminish prayer by using phrases we don't always mean, like, I'll pray for you, or, oh, prayers for that. And while we might intend to do it, so often we don't intend for it to be an actual powerful response to what that person has shared or or who they are or what's going on in their lives. And and I want us to, to travel back into scripture here and reclaim that power that comes in prayer. Reclaim the importance and the purpose for, for prayer. Because when, when we have prayed, the place where we're gathered is shaken The Holy Spirit fills us and we are able to speak the word of God with boldness. It's not to be taken lightly. That's not to be said that, you know, all prayer is good prayer and we should be praying constantly. Our our lives should be a prayer to God. And so talking to God is something we should do all the time. So it's not, I'm not pulling away from that. I just think sometimes we forget how powerful it is to talk to God. 
How, how amazing of a gift that is to, to simply be able to commune with God. I've got to grab this book over here and read from it quick. Sorry, I wanted to excuse my reach there for a moment. Um, this is this is a book that we're going to hear a lot from this fall. It's it's a part of what the conference is going to be looking at through the the month of Advent, the month of Advent. Wow, I didn't say that right. And um, as we do, we'll hear some more from it. But I want to I want to share from page fifty nine in this book. In an extended season of crisis and chaos, we seek a place to stand, a path to follow, a light to guide us. And I think that's, that's what we, we know. That we know that when we have this season of extended crisis and chaos, and that's really what the last several years have been for us, we seek a place to stand. Do you hear it? A path to follow and a light to guide us. And when we seek those things, there's no better place to find them than in prayer, than in communing with our God, in talking to our God. And sometimes we take that too lightheartedly. We don't focus on the power that, that there is in sitting down and talking to God. Is our world really shaken when we talk to God? Because every time we talk to God, it's, it is a gift of guidance, of a path to follow, a place to stand in a world where there is no place to stand. And being able to to grab a hold of the power of that means understanding that we should never take lightly the words, I'll pray for you. Because we know that within that, there are no light words. This, this passage from, from Matthew, don't, don't do what the Gentiles do and just heap, um, empty phrases when you pray. Don't heap empty phrases when you talk about prayer. But instead, every word that is in our heart needs to bring with it the potential for God's power. Sometimes we don't give God enough credit and when we don't take prayer seriously, we're not giving God enough credit. Pray then in this way, Jesus tells us. Our Father in heaven. It's sort of a, yep, praying to you, God. Hallowed be thy name. You're the one who matters, God, not me. Your kingdom come. This is an acknowledgement of knowing God's power and God's authority is here. Um, so often I hear people complain about things like, um, there's no prayer in school. Well, that's not true. People can pray whenever they want to pray. There's no corporate prayer in school. We don't do it together because people come from different traditions and, and that would be, um, it, it would be dishonoring our tradition to have someone of another tradition force us to pray as well. And the same goes true with if we force others to do that. But we are allowed, we can pray wherever we go. We're, we're always allowed to talk to God. Um, and, God is sovereign wherever we are. So when we pray, your kingdom come, we say to God, we acknowledge this is the place for you to rule. This is the place where we set aside our 
um, urges to be in charge. And we give that over to you. Thy kingdom come. The power in prayer is that God is the one in power. Your will be done. God, I'm going to ask you these things when I pray. But when I do, I expect that whatever happens is going to be done, not just according to what I think should happen, but according to what you know needs to happen. And you know what I cannot. So these, this opening, this introduction into the Lord's Prayer is all about the sovereignty and the power of God. Why does our prayer hold power? Because God is the one who is in charge of it and in charge of everything on earth as it is in heaven. That's how it is in heaven. Why do we keep trying to make it about us on earth? Give us this day our daily bread. I don't think many of us mean that one. We're literally asking God to just give us what we need for today. Give us the manna from heaven. Give us what we need just for now. And it's a beautiful thing when we think about it like, God, I need some things. Can you take care of it? But when we think about it like this, God, I don't need all of that other stuff because that's not for today give me just what i need today and i'll worry about tomorrow when tomorrow comes is that really what we mean though when we pray this prayer there's power in surrendering to god in such a way that we trust that giving things up never really means giving them up. I think this is why we, we struggle with stewardship so much as human beings. Um, we, we struggle from this perspective. If we give this over to God, it's not ours anymore. We can't control it. We can't be the ones who lord over it. Our will is no longer done. Our kingdom is no longer here. And we have to back off. Stewardship is about that. It is about trusting what we have to God instead of ourselves. And so one of our biggest struggles with stewardship and in, in with letting go of things is understanding that God's will ought to be done. And we only need our daily bread. We don't have to be in charge of somebody else's. When we give something in mission, when we, when we help someone or do something that, that shares what we have with someone else, once we let go of it, it is not ours. Once we, we give it up to God's use, Sorry, I have a sniffle. Um, it's, it's not our problem to, or our concern um, to worry about anymore. And stewardship means letting go of the control that we wield over daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. Now, I know that this is one we always struggle with, but if we reclaim that power in prayer and think about how we are called, like in verse seven, to not heap up empty phrases, then when we say this, when we say, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, what we say, is I mean this. This is not an empty phrase I'm going to heap up. 
I don't just talk about forgiveness. I'm going to struggle through it as painful, as frustrating, as, as time consuming, as hurtful, as, as just difficult as it can be. I am willing to struggle through that because this is not an empty phrase. I believe that there's power in it because there is power in prayer. So when we say, forgive us our debts, as we forgive those who, who are our debtors, or who have um, borrowed from us our patience, borrowed our time, borrowed our resources, borrowed the things that steal from us, um, we will be doing that as well. We'll be giving that same power to the way we forgive as we give to the way that we hope that we are forgiven. And it means something. It is not empty. Do not bring us to the time of trial. I, I think sometimes we, we have these moments where we totally misunderstand what that is. The time of trial, a time of evil, a time of temptation. We've heard it translated. Um, but it is a time when we are tested. Don't, don't bring us up to that. Don't make us have to struggle. But instead, rescue us from evil. Rescue us from whatever it is that, that is causing this torment in our souls. God does not put us into that, but God rescues us from that. Don't bring us to that. We know you don't. We know that you're not the one who drags us kicking and screaming into the things that torment us. But do rescue us from this evil. That's very powerful, isn't it? Acknowledging God's position in being able to save us from all things that cause us harm. When we pray, I hope we can reclaim this as, as our story. Reclaim prayer as not just empty words heaped upon themselves upon one another, but to reclaim that with that power of acts, with that ground shaking, Holy Spirit filling boldness that allows us to know that when we pray, there is power. The things we pray for, God listens to. So when we ask these things, when we pray this Lord's Prayer, God is listening to us. Let's make this the way we live, not just the way we pray. Matthew chapter 6, if you haven't lived in that for a while, Go there and make prayer your home. Amen.